and welcome to the Reimagination at Work podcast. This is the podcast where we ask you to challenge everything you think you know about the world of work and try to build a way of working that works for everyone. I'm your host, I'm Allegra Chapman, I'm one of the co-creators of Watch This Space and I am joined by my fellow co-creators Mo Cangelal and Rachel Pearson. Hello! Hey, back together again! And <laughs> our special guest... Ben Pearson. <laughs> Hello, Ben. He's nearly eight months old and he's got opinions. <laughs> he's lots of opinions for the podcast. <laughs> We're trying to shut him up with some crisps. <laughs> Rachel is technically on maternity leave at the moment, but has come in to join in the podcast. And um, so she's brought Ben along with her. Yeah. Um, yeah. We were having a discussion about, well, we wanted to record a needed mm. to, we wanted to record a podcast and. Um, talking about meetings and um I was like oh I have to have, you know panic and dash around and try and find someone to look after Ben and it's like why? why yeah why can't he come to the meeting like babies should be in more meetings I think the whole point is babies to reimagine be, work yeah babies should be in all meetings. and also you know it might have meant that I couldn't like come along to the podcast if we were really like uh insisting on not having uh babies around and hmm. doing meetings the meeting way um, which means I would have missed out. Yeah. Like lots of women do every day because the world of work doesn't work for us. And we would have missed out on your insights and your perspectives on this topic. Well, I've had three hours sleep and I'm stuck with <laughs> quinoa in my mouth. So, <laughs> so let's go. Yeah. Before we begin, let me tell you about our sponsor for this episode. Business and IP Centre Sussex, with its regional centre in the Jubilee Library in Brighton, supports entrepreneurs, startups and small businesses across Sussex, from that first spark of inspiration to successfully launching and developing a business. Whether you're just setting out, need advice on protecting your intellectual property, or have a brilliant idea you want to discuss, BIPC are here to guide you. They offer access to a wealth of free business information, expert advice and events. Find out more at brighton-hove.gov.uk forward slash BIPC. So this ties in quite nicely with what we were going to talk about this month because we we did an episode a little while ago on going back to the office because it was, <laughs> at the time, we thought it was post-pandemic. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and everybody was talking about going back to the office. And now we're here again because we kind of think it's post-pandemic again, even though it's kind of not. And everybody's still talking about getting everybody back to the office. But we know quite a lot of people, I would say most people, don't want to go back to the office. So workers don't want to be in the office. But business owners are worried about the money that they're, they're spending on these offices or landlords are worried about their rent. And businesses are worried about not bringing everybody together. So this is an opportunity to reimagine what an office is, what coming into work is all about, what coming into meetings is all about, and think about framing offices in a different way. So my first question to you both is, what is an office for? (laughs) I guess, well, I guess maybe it it does mean it would be interesting to see what you guys think Mm. the answer to that question. So I think it might be different for quite a lot of people. For me... An office is a place where I get to kind of cut off pretty much the rest of what's going on in life and focus on a series of tasks. <laughs> and for me, uh, even more so, like doing that with a group of other people who are also focused on those tasks or related tasks and working together. So when we were, you know, not we were working from home, we were working from not working from the office anymore. I actually missed it a lot. And I know, you know, I've become a mum in that time so I kind of see I see the beauty of being able to not have to go to an office and be there um but also we're very lucky in Brighton in that we've got like these amazing co-working spaces so when I do go back to work I'll be working from plus x and Ben's nursery will be across the road because it's quite central so I'll kind of have I'll ha- kind of have that like office vibe and all of the things that I wanted and need and view uh, as an office but with this you know 
nice environment where Ben's welcome to come in. But, you know, I can shut him out if I want to. <laughs> and think it really well, won't I? Just, um, you know, for, for uh, legal purposes, we should point out she won't be shutting him out. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was like... <laughs> yeah. He'll, Somebody will be watching. He'll have some, some people. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess the office to me is just... Uh, uh, it's it's definitely more than like a bricks and mortar like place you have to go to. I think for me, as long as there are other people that I can work with alongside throughout the day, and it's a like space where I can kind of um, shut out the rest of what's going on in life, then it doesn't really matter where it is exactly. Um, I certainly think like maybe what we put air quotes traditional office is not working for people but not because of the place or the building or anything like that I think maybe it's more to do with the constructs of like you, you like non-flexible working you know I think that that's probably that's probably the thing that showed I got distracted by my, my own baby then <laughs> <laughs> happens a lot. May what about you? So for me I think it's um a place to go to to collaborate with others and work with others so I, my whole career has been in sales so I've never gone to the office five days a week ever and I wouldn't ever want to do that even when I worked at a company that was involved a commute I was never somebody that went into the office every day because in sales you don't the whole point is you don't want to see sales people in the office so I've always felt that you go into the office when you need to meet people and work with people on things more than it being somewhere where you sit and do your work mm. um, and for me personally I always want a working week with lots of different things going on I could never have a job where you do the same thing every day I would hate that so I've always been used to obviously in sales traveling a lot so work has always been something it's quite solitary actually a sales career you, you're out on your own you're traveling with a mixture of them popping into the office some of the time and when you go into the office it is to see people and to collaborate and actually I think that's what a lot of this is about so I think there's some different things to think about so first of all not everybody can work from home there are a lot of people that don't have a place to work in their home so for them they need somewhere to actually work day to day and that's what a lot of the co-working spaces can fulfill for people that don't have somewhere to work from home but for people that are happy working from home I think the reasons to go and go to an office are to collaborate share ideas socialize talk to people and that I, I also think co-working plays a part there as well because you might be working for a company where the, everybody's in different places or the main office is somewhere else but you go to a co-working space to collaborate with other people mm -hmm. over different things so I think it's just about thinking about what those things are for what I don't think offices are for I don't think they've ever been for that, but they have been, obviously, for lots of people, is to watch people working, essentially. Mm. That, that kind of micromanaging of watching people is, I think, I think people that still think office is about presenteeism and those things mm. are, the, are the ones that really need to think about the world of work and what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. that's a big part of what's driving a lot of business owners say they need people back in the office is because they're really scared about what everyone's going up to when they, they can't watch them they don't trust them mm. yeah. yeah but actually I mean there's plenty of ways of measuring the outputs of your staff and what they're doing mm. and actually if they're delivering on their objectives and what you've asked them to do does it matter if they take half an hour off to go and watch you know Jeremy Kyle or what? is Jeremy Kyle still on is like whatever, whatever's on on the day if I ever watch tv in the daytime at the moment it's CBB, but I don't know what's on. But, um yeah yeah it doesn't make any difference and again having had a career in sales it, that that role is all about the results you deliver and nobody cares how you deliver a sale it's about delivering a sale so if you can do it in half the time of somebody else then great you don't have to get that time back yeah and I think essentially work is um more about what you deliver than how like the time you spend sitting at a desk and um one of our previous podcasts with Rich Torn about teal leadership is all about that it's about people self-managing essentially knowing what it is they have to deliver on and choosing how they deliver on that rather than it being about clocking in and clocking out at an office yeah yeah I think I'm I'm sort of somewhere in between the two of you because I know Rachel really likes an office and likes being with mm. people and working with people mm. and you really like not mm. <laughs> being in an office and I kind of I for, for deep work for things where I have to concentrate and get my head down I really like being 
in my own space. I mean, I share an office with my husband. We've we've got um we've got a little home office that we share together. So I I have him interrupting me, but I'm married to him, so I can tell him to shut up. Whereas <laughs> you can't tell colleagues to shut up and go away. Um, it's frowned upon. It, it's frowned upon. So you shouldn't tell colleagues to shut up and go away. But it can get really difficult because especially when you're in a, a senior role and people have lots of questions for you and they want to ask you things like I found that before in the office where I've had my day mapped out and we do all these things but then people keep popping over going can I just borrow you for five minutes can I just ask you can I just and then I get to the end of the day and nothing's happened because I spent my whole day having little chats with people and mm, one of those kind of these these elusive water cooler moments that, that businesses keep talking about as being so valuable. They can be great, but also they suck up a lot of your time. So if I've got a deep piece of work, I mean, even back when I was in an employed job um, pre-pandemic, if I had a really you know deep piece of work that I needed to focus on, I would still try and work from home to do it just to get away from everybody and, and have some quiet time. But I also do really value collaborating with people and just getting to brainstorm ideas and chat things through and talk over what I'm doing and and just hear everybody else talking through what they're doing and and all of that kind of vibe so I do get a lot out of that collaboration I also really like just getting out of the house I think I get a lot of benefit from I can start to go a bit stir crazy if I'm just in the house working all the time and I love my children. It's really <laughs> nice to get away from them, yeah, and, and get some space and some quiet time, and you know, not trying to work when the kids are rampaging around the house, mm. screaming with poor Patrol and Gina at the top of their lungs. Like it's, it's just good to have that space and just and get a change of scenery and things like that. So I think that is really valuable to me. But if we sort of agreed that a more flexible approach is the way forward, then what's the best way that businesses can use their offices we had a great podcast a little while ago with Claire from Ideal who was talking about because they have this huge office that suddenly is isn't being mm. utilized and she was talking about different ways that they could use their office and what could that space be for and she had some really amazing ideas yeah she essentially of- said um the desk is dead so the concept mm. of having desks didn't she? and she said it's all more about using the work spaces more yeah. flexibly and, you know, even things like having evening entertainment and comedy night, like mm-hmm. using the space differently. And the fact that people aren't just going to come in and sit in rows at desks yeah. anymore, but they'll come in to collaborate and sh- like come up with ideas. And so creating spaces around that. I so, think the, sp- the space of the office, the environment of the office, like does is the thing that needs to change. If people are still wanting to have a place where they go to, to work to create to collaborate and all of that stuff and this like yeah I think like rows of desks where you're sat either facing each other you know or in cubicles that Mm. kind of thing is just I mean I think it's always been a bit of a barrier to creativity anyway and collaboration with both of those things go hand in hand pretty much so it's worth noting though because we talk a lot about it being more flexible and people maybe hot desking and things like that but for certain people so particularly I'm thinking of neurodiverse people the idea of hot desking is an absolute nightmare because and I, I speak from my own neurodiverse brain on this you like your space mm. and your area and your stuff mm. and things in a certain place and it's a nightmare when you have to pack everything down take it all away bring it back um, you might have to sit in a different desk to what you normally do. Mm-hmm. You haven't got your set place and your set routine and your set area that is yours, and that is a bit of an issue. Mm-hmm. So it is it's not very helpful for routine, and mm-hmm. people, lots of neurodiverse people really need that routine and that kind of control over their space, I think. I was at an office um, yesterday, losing track of days, where they are bringing back people back differently. They're now having less space and less desks and they're saying okay so I think I think I can't remember how many people it was but a certain number of people are now sharing a desk because they're in at different times mm-hmm. and so yeah we need to think about whether people can operate in that way because some people mm-hmm. won't like that at all um, and again I speak from someone with a sales career where you never get your own desk and you just have to come in and find somewhere to sit and mm-hmm. that's just life mm-hmm. so like, that's the way it is because nobody really wants to see the sales people in the office anyway and so if you want people that have you know chosen those careers essentially have got used to that the fact that you don't have a space and you just kind of Mm. come in but it doesn't suit everyone so it's kind of thinking about 
what would suit everyone and could could workplaces have some desks that mm. are assigned to people and some that aren't for people that, that are happy not having an assigned desk so some people do get their set you know how how they want things and and others don't and could they do that and perhaps perhaps the same thing question for co-working spaces as well because they are about going in and finding somewhere to work and actually could they think about having some areas that are designated i think they probably do don't they, some they have, do some... have dedicated desks yeah, yeah you can have them usually more expensive though mm. to, to hire a dedicated desk but um, I mean, certainly, like something we talk to businesses a lot about is uh, the idea of having different zones and different areas. So, can you have some quiet spaces? Mm. A lot of co-working spaces do this mm, as well. They, do, they yeah. have a quiet area where you can sit and focus. And for people who don't want a lot of sensory input as well, that's really nice to get away from all the noise. And then louder spaces where people can collaborate. And then i think it emphasizes again the importance of really speaking to your staff and getting a real sense of what they need and what does each person who comes in need so you know maybe rachel needs her own desk and her own space that is just hers but my will just hold desk and, and collaborate and move about and you know different people will want different things and then if you have a really clear idea of what everyone wants and you make it part of the norm that people can talk about their needs the way mm. that they work the way that they best um you know process things in the office then you can have a much better idea of what you, what you need and how you lay things out for people. Yeah, and I do see it developing that um, you, who you work for will be less about your geographical location to a particular place. Mm. I think, you know, particularly um, a lot of tech companies, a lot of tech companies around here, for example, have struggled to recruit prior to things going remote, yeah. but now have a much bigger choice because people can be anywhere. And I do see the future being much more about that than you have to go to a particular place to work I think it's going to be about creating whatever product or service it is across different places and there are examples of people we work with where um that's how they operate so we and again another podcast we have with Zapier Laura from Zapier mm-hmm. they've never had an office and I think it's going to be much more about that that it's not about sort of a, a geographical location so much than bringing together the, the people with the skills that you need for your business so how then can you encourage that kind of collaboration and communication and, and keeping everybody up to date on what they're doing if everybody is working in different ways and utilising the office in different ways or utilising different office space? I think those are the, the challenges now for people running businesses and people leading mm-hmm. teams is how they do that. Um, there are different things that work for different people. So using collaboration tools, using different uh, messaging tools thinking about what are the best ways to actually enable people to feel part of something because that you have got the risk that people feel very distant from yeah. what's going on um so how yeah it's thinking about how people do that and thinking about the ways that they communicate and share information so that that happens and then there's also something which we haven't talked about is if you've got a mixture if you've got some people going into an office and some people not mm-hmm proximity bias comes into play mm, and yeah. you know is it going to be that just to be really controversial about it is it going to be that all the men go into the office and all the women don't mm-hmm. and so then the men get certain advantages and promotions well, and things like that in, in mm. a, a lot of companies now that that this sort of um you know split way of working has evolved because a lot of the women are the ones who are doing the caring work mm. and the child care and they're the ones that need the flexibility of being at home and able to kind of you know, off to do the child pick up or go and you know take the elderly relatives to the shops but all the men are, mm. are, are kind of happy to go into the office and that then you end up with a situation where because they're more visible are they the ones who are, who are getting promoted mm. and the pay rises and all of that so that's yeah something else that's really important to, to think about. I think um as well as sort of business leaders and um you know people managers and those kind of people thinking about how they improve communication and collaboration when some people are working from home some people are working from the office everyone's working from the home you don't have an office the other side of that is the people that are making the tools that we use in order to collaborate and communicate with each other in those scenarios need to think about how they best serve different types of people as well Mm -hmm. so it's not like you know a a kind of cookie cutter you know tool for every single person you know tools online tools are really really personal people have very strong opinions about how you know how they how usable they are and you know how accessible they are and that kind of stuff so those people those tech companies that are building things you know like 
you know, Teams, Zoom. So those type of companies need to think about how they're building their tools and um, what updates they add to them to to fully um, equip people yeah. with the things that they need, you know, based on who they are and what challenges they face and, and you know, just their preferences as well. Uh, yeah, it's a really good point that all of these conversations kind of are based on the idea that collaboration and communication was working really well. <laughs> yeah, it system. wasn't. And it wasn't at all. Like, there's lots of, of ways in which a lot, you know, a lot of people weren't able to input or weren't able to part of the discussion or weren't able to be heard. And actually, you know, there was a lot of flaws anyway. So the fact that we're now all physically working in different ways is maybe quite a good visual cue for businesses to think about the fact that people work in different ways because people have always worked in different mm. ways it's just that that was kind of within their own heads and less visible than it is now mm. and you sort of imagine I always think like product development teams that I've worked with before where they would used to work in one particular way now I think if they're developing I don't know a new app development you'd imagine that there'd be um some collaboration tools set up perhaps some trello boards there'd be some meet online meetings where people can get together and talk there'd be some slack channels set up you know there'd be all different ways to get all of the inputs so that everyone can input their thoughts and ideas into the overall design of something for example and i think it's going to be much more like that it does feel to me like the days of um endless you know endless meetings and i think that's corporate life endless meetings in an office where i don't think i actually did any work just sat in these things all the time I, th I think those days have to me anyway they feel like they've gone although I know there are a lot of um organizations that are trying to get people back into those places because they've got those physical spaces mm. still so what do they do with them but again yeah it's, it's how do you use that physical space and can that space be a place where you do bring your team together for, for collaboration and, and talking at, at some times and then other times is it that you rent it out as an event space or do mm. you you know put on do, you know talks and things like yeah that, you know whatever it might be but how can you reuse that space in a way that's going to work for everybody and it depends what kind of um, company as well so again I used to work for manufacturing companies now they have still have to have factory floors and people going in every day and have done all the way through the pandemic and that isn't going to change because there's no other way of producing mm. those things so for those kind of those businesses I can sort of see why they're still trying to get people to come back in because they've already got people that are going to be there all the time. I think it depends what kind of business as well as to what people do. And you mentioned meetings and that's a really great opportunity to talk about another one of our favourite topics because this is a really great example of things that didn't work in the past for collaboration and now we're sort of pushing people to come back into the office so that we can do meetings in an old-fashioned way. But... I mean, meetings, meetings are terrible. <laughs> Let's be really clear about that. Um, What's they can be good. They I can sort, be I good. Sort of miss, I but. sort of miss meetings, but uh, I came back from a month-long trip um, uh, the night the first lockdown happened. So we'd already been out of, like, work life yeah. for a month, came back, and then it was work from home. And then, like, we've been working home this whole time. We've just started working at plus x as i went on maternity leave so it's been such a long time since i've had like a, me a meeting about work with like a big group of people so i kind of i kind of missed them but having said that i was the first person to admit back when i was you know when life was normal inverted commas um that would be like this meeting's done now, or we've gone off topic, or the first person to basically hate on meetings that were that could have been an email that like, yeah. that were just like they you don't know, really come to a conclusion at the end of it. Like I like meetings when they're kind of workshop style, like everybody has the chance to have their say, share their ideas, and that there's like a kind of there's like a goal at the end of yeah. that meeting and you feel like you've met it I like a well-run meeting is great. I do as well a well-run meeting with um breaking up the activities in it I think can yeah. be really good um and I've always felt that too many people get invited to too many meetings so when, mm -hmm. again when I've worked in companies I've always been that person that people really don't like it when you say you're not going to come to their meeting we don't think you need to be at a meeting but I think it's really important to, to be able to say if you don't think you need to be at a meeting yeah because Otherwise, you're just wasting time because other people want you to sit there and I don't know, do what. It, it, I see it all the time now with Zoom meetings. 
there's loads of people get invited to these things and do they all actually need to be there and do, do, do all these things need to be zoom meetings i think we've forgotten about phone calls as well sometimes and so there's too many and then they go in your diary for a whole block of an hour as well and it's like do we really need a whole hour on yeah. zoom to talk about these things it's because yeah. it's just like the accepted um meeting like um length but like if you kind of think that if you were like right this can be a quick short and dirty meeting like we really need to just like have a quick like get together you put a meeting in the calendar for 10 minutes people will be like well what's the point of mm. that but actually that 10 minutes together might be super powerful and avoid strings of emails and that kind of stuff yeah. but on the flip side it, it's kind of just like an accepted thing that meetings are like half an hour or an hour mm. or an hour and a half a lot of like, companies really do you think um, about like why you're having that yeah. meeting and then you know and then think well how long do we actually really need to you to use our time up on this and a lot of companies do um a lot of tech companies do stand-ups first thing yeah, in the morning that yeah. are about 10 minutes and that's it mm -hmm. just a 10 minute quick catch up and then then you're not starting meeting hour-long meetings all day yeah so, i do think um if you're all working from home or some of you are working from home one of the most important things to feel connected and collaborate and communicate properly is to like have your video on and to be like yeah. visually present as well as you know because you know things have changed for the better in a lot of ways in terms of working places working from home all of these options but one of the easy things that i think companies have slipped into is just well I'm just uh, you know I'm still in my pajamas at home or like I just don't feel like being looked at today which is all you know I I do get that from like time to time you do feel like that but I felt like that when I was in the office and I had to have like an hour and a half meeting or going to a pitch so you didn't get that option then mm -hmm. and I feel like that was maybe a good thing in some ways because it meant that you had to be visually present there as well as like... I always really worry about, about that as well, because I've, I've heard a lot of businesses say, oh, yeah, we let people not have cameras on for mental health reasons if they don't want to be seen. But I'm like, if your mental health is so bad that you don't want people looking at you, why are you at work? Yeah, why you are you at work? Like, yeah. that's, that's a day off situation if, if it's that bad. Yeah. But, and I, you know... I've, I've, I've talked about this in the past. I've had mental health issues. I've, I've had depression my whole life. I know what it's like to have a day where you're like, I can't. Yeah. Do it. No one speaks to me. I don't want but anyone to day look off. at me today. <laughs> yeah, that's a day off. Yeah. That's a, you need, and you need to give your staff permission to take time off when they feel like that, not just to switch their camera on. Yeah. That's not, that, and I think that is not a way agreed. of dealing with mental yeah, health. Yeah. And problems. I think the only, I guess for me, the only times it's okay to have your camera off is if you're dialing into something and there are lots of people dialing in, you're listening <laughs> to someone. Yeah. And you're, you're just someone that's dialing in and listening and you're not part of the yeah. event i think yeah. then that's fine to well, you know like uh, sandwich you know reasons and that kind of yeah stuff. So I think, you know there are there are times when i think you know you can't have but, it but i mean the thought of like dialing into a, um, a zoom meeting or a team meeting and everyone's got their camera off and i think well that could have been a phone call then <laughs> yeah or it could have been something different like what's the reason for it having but to be that and it's really isolating and it makes you feel really just i've got no really idea in. what people like i you know I think I'm pretty discerning with like voices and stuff, mm. but why I just feel like quite disconnected from people. I think when the videos are off all the time, you're sat there and like, I want to put my video camera on all the time, you know, mm. so, so that people, you know, no matter what like, I look like, which is going to be shit <laughs> for, the, for the foreseeable future, FYI. It's not true. <laughs> look, Ben's laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> but also it's worth just noting um really quickly that all three of us are people who are quite happy to speak up in meetings and quite happy to get our voices heard and say what we think about the situation and there are a lot of people who are probably mm. not as bullshit as we are and and for them you know getting heard in meetings mm. and getting heard in the office generally when you're in the building is is a real challenge so having tools in place for that is really really important and having different ways that you collaborate and get different inputs but Rachel, you started off by saying, I love a well-run meeting. And uh, so many meetings are really badly that, I think that's the thing. That's the yeah. best of it all it is. You need an agenda at the beginning. You need people to have processing time for those who need it to think through what they're going to say first. You need time afterwards for people who need it to digest and come back to you with inputs. You need to stick to the agenda. You need to monitor your timings. You need to make sure that you're enabling everybody to contribute in different types of ways so that you can hear everyone's voices. There's so much to think about when you create a meeting 
beyond just you know what if we've got everyone in a room mm. together then everyone will collaborate it's not that simple last closing thoughts mo what's the future of the office um i think the future of the office is not a physical building it's um about uh people working for companies where they contribute to the purpose of the company and it's not about going into one place every day i think those days have gone rachel um i think the future of the office is less a village less an office more of a village so yeah somewhere that you go to and you do more than just work um and but that doesn't feel like it bad that doesn't feel like a negative thing it's like it's a place i enjoy spending more than just my work life i guess and more than just the people who are in my own company you know so i think you know i'm a big believer in co-working co-working spaces with other businesses getting new ideas from other people and, and you know being present with other people so, there we go well that's it thank you very much for joining us we have been the team at watch this space you can find us at watchthisspace.uk you can follow us on all your favorite social media platforms at, at watch this spce and join us next time on the reimagination at work podcast thank you very much